We did it. Our first part, a Titan of CNC Academy 1N basic building block. I thought I think it's a great first part. My plan is actually to make all of his parts. I'm just going to throw some footage up. This is literally the first part I've ever made on this machine. Done some you know, face milling and some other operations. It's taken me a long time to get the machine to this point. Super excited. I plan to make all of Titan's parts, so this is kind of the first in a series. But uh, I just wanted to get some video up, so I'm going to throw the video up and we're going to walk through it. Uh, I'll kind of fast forward and do real time so you can see real time versus fast forward as far as footage, but it's pretty awesome. So let's hit it. Alright, so first thing I need to do is set up my tool library. Now, um, if all my tools were in there, this wouldn't require as much of a ruckamaroo, but because I have to add some tools to the machine, um, I have to kind of re-zero everything. Um, I haven't permanently placed my, my tool setter, so that's mistake one right now. Uh, and issue number two is that the home switches on the Skyfire are not super accurate. I mean... So they're good within, say, two or three thousandths, but when you're trying to add tools, you want them all to be offset against the same delta. Um, now, my machine has uh, ceramic bearings, so subsequently, sometimes these touch probes don't actually work. So I do a little a little switch here to to go from uh, to 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 make a connectivity. Um, they actually work. If, the, if there's coolant in the bearings and they work, I guess maybe that's maybe a bad thing. Or, but anyways, so anyways, so what I've done is I've touched off the tool, the the the, the touch probe against the tool setter because that's rigid, and then I can z I can zero my my Heimer, and up in the corner you'll see me writing down some numbers. What I'm writing down is the difference in length between my Heimer and uh, the touch probe, so that I can use that information to set the appropriate default offset for all the tools. And so what I'll then do is first I'm going to real check just double check my math. So if the tool setter touches if, if the touch probe touches just right, then I know it's good. So I'm happy with the number and now I can go through and touch off all my other tools. Um, that was the the face mill. Next is the the uh, 3 8 inch end mill. Uh, then we're going to go to what I use for my chamfering, which is a mill and drill. Uh, as we keep going after the mill and drill, we're going to get the drill bit, um, which I think had a little bit of coolant on it. So this is a, a, this is a little through coolant drill bit. Not that I can do through coolant, but when I was talking to my tool supplier, he gave me, I asked him for a lot of different vendors' tools because I want to test people's tools. And this is the form, the form tapping 1032. Um, so that's all five tools. When I'm done with that, what I'll do is I'll take that tool out and I'll use my Heimer. So basically everything is set. To where my Heimer is zero, everything is is um, the, all the tool tables are based off of the the Heimer zero. Um, all right, so uh, going ahead and putting our stock in. Now, once the stock gets in and we're happy with it, I want to make sure that the stock is. I'm not going to crash the machine, so I'm just checking. Yep, I have enough extra material on top, so tighten that down. We're good to go. Um, we're going to find uh, the Z top the the x and the y and and because of how tyson suggests doing it which i tried to do um i actually made a mistake here because of it um because i'm learning that technique he likes so it's not just zeroing you're actually zeroing and then you're you're moving your what the zeros you find a little bit because tyson likes to do the origin off of the corner of the part not the origin off the corner of the stock and I'm used to, on my CNC router, I do everything off the corner of the stock. So I, I, I do my math correctly for my X, and I do my math correctly for my Z. But I actually mess up the math on my Y, and subsequently I don't actually cut the back of the, the part at all, um, which you'll see when we get to actually cutting the part. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's right here when I do this. I zero correctly, but then I'm supposed to basically go into the, into the stock by uh 50 thousandths and I actually go out of the stock by 50 thousandths so the whole part is made 50 thousandths out of alignment uh with the stock um not that I know that now uh and, and what I just did to make the part pretty is I just put it back in the vise and I ran the face mill over the the raw edge so the part would be pretty because it needs to be pretty on all four sides and, and if this were obviously if this were a real part for a client then I would be I'd be doing this so here's me trying to figure out how do I 
do the Z thing because at first I didn't realize I could actually edit um, while I'm setting zeros. I can actually edit those zeros, which um, I now know, and it's a pretty easy setting to do. So you can kind of do it in line while you're working. So maybe next time I won't have that mistake because I won't be thinking about it in the wrong way. Subsequently, once everything's good, um, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and do a complete run in the air. Now, since this is my first part, I run in the air. When I'm comfortable with the machine, I'm not going to run every part in the air, but it makes sense right now just to run everything in the air. And I'm running at like you know, 8x speed. So you get the idea. Run all, run the whole part in the air. Um, you know, they're finishing up the drilling, and yeah, it looks like it's drilling and so on. I'm happy. Uh, so once, once that's all done, again, first part. So this is super nerve-wracking. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just turn up the sound and I am going to stop talking so you can watch it cut. I'm not going to cut it. I'm not going to speed it up. I'm not going to slow it down. Just the machine cutting so you can hear it um, and get an idea of what is the sky fire like and then we'll ooh and awe over the results.
So here's the results. Um, I'm super happy with them. I love this machine so far. I mean, okay, there's lots of things I didn't love about the machine, but man, once you've cut your first part, there's kind of a certain like glee that happens when, yes, you can do a thing. Um, I did not push this machine. 25 inches a minute, 4,000 RPM. That's not pushing this machine remotely. I have 10,000 RPM spindle and, uh, and this machine laughed at 25 inches a minute. I'm pretty sure 75 inches a minute is not without reason, maybe even 100 inches a minute um, at 10,000 RPM. Uh, we got nine more parts to make. I will definitely be testing how fast I can cut aluminum with this over those nine parts as I become more comfortable with the machine. But the results uh, are solid. The, I mean, the, the width was spot on. It's a four inch part. It was exactly four inches um, with my calipers. Um, there were a few measurements that were off by half a thou. Um, so I, I can't complain. This really did, it did hit its marks um, where user error wasn't involved. Um, I got nine more parts to make. Looking forward to that. Let me know what you think of the content structure in the comments below. Uh, if you liked the video, please thumbs up. If you didn't, please thumbs down. And regardless of what you thought of the video, please subscribe and hit that notifications button. Thanks for watching.